Love is blind. Hi Lang. I'm writing in English to practice. I'm sorry I didn't answer your email. I started school the day after we arrived in Boston and I've got too much work to do. I hate it here. I can't understand what people are saying. The accent is very strange. I miss Shanghai and I miss playing in the band with you. I try to practice the guitar, but the neighbor who lives opposite is angry because his daughter plays the violin and he said the noise disturbs her. I saw her staring out of the window at me. I think she hates me too. She's really beautiful. Hey, I've got to stop. My mom just came back from work and I haven't finished my homework. Please write back soon. I want to hear about what you're doing in London. Can you understand the accent? Deshi. I think I'm in love. Deshi turned off the computer and opened his English book, but it was difficult to concentrate on irregular verbs. He couldn't stop thinking about the girl in the building opposite. She had beautiful eyes. He opened his bedroom window and looked across the street. Her window was open too and he could hear her practicing classical music on her violin. She was very good. She probably hates rock music, thought Deshi. Have you finished your homework? Deshi's mom opened the door. Quick! Dinner is in half an hour. He wasn't hungry. Deshi couldn't sleep that night and he was late for school the next morning. He ran out of the house and there she was. She was sitting in her dad's car with the window open. Deshi dropped his school bag and she turned to look at him. He couldn't move. Her eyes were green. He'd never seen anyone with green eyes before. He smiled at her but she just stared at him like he didn't exist. Deshi could feel his face turning red. He picked up his bag and ran for the bus. School didn't go well that day. He failed a maths test and the English teacher shouted at him for not concentrating. At lunch time, he wasn't hungry. The food in the cafeteria just made him feel sick. And then he had to stay late after school for extra English and missed the bus. He decided to walk home. He was crossing the park near his street, thinking about his school back in Shanghai and how he missed it. Then, he saw her. She was sitting on a bench with her dog. Oh no, she's seen me, he thought. He waved at her, but she just ignored him again. Idiot, he said to himself. Why did I wave? Now she really hates me. Later that evening, Deshi was practicing his guitar with the headphones on. His friends in Shanghai thought he was very good, but now he didn't want anyone to hear him playing. He was thinking about getting a classical guitar when his mom came into the room. She had a letter in her hand. The postman made a mistake, she said. This is for the building across the street. Can you take it over while I'm making dinner? Okay, mom, said Deshi. Deshi thought about how unhappy he was as he went down the stairs. His mom had no time for him, she was always working. School was really difficult and he had no friends in Boston. He was outside the building opposite when the door opened. Oh no, it's her, he thought. The girl was about to come down the steps when she dropped something. Without thinking, Deshi picked it up. Hello? She said frightened. Who's there? Deshi was confused. I live across the street. Are you the boy who plays the guitar? She said. Hi, I'm Helen. I really like your music and I'm sorry my dad complained. Deshi looked at what he was holding. It was a white stick. She was blind. YouTube star Charlie McDonnell In April 2007, a 16-year-old boy named Charlie McDonnell was studying for his exams. But he was bored, so he turned on his laptop computer. He found a website called YouTube and watched a video of another teenager like him. The teenager was sitting in his bedroom and talking about how bored he was. I can do better than that, thought Charlie. So he used his laptop and webcam to make his first video, 
and posted it on YouTube under the name Charlie Isakolike. YouTube started in 2005 and is now the world's largest video website. More than 3 billion videos are watched every day on YouTube and a large number of those are video blogs. These are simply videos of people talking to a camera about their lives or things that interest them. Two days after Charlie posted his first video, he had 150 subscribers, so he decided to make more videos. He soon became quite popular. A few months later, Oprah Winfrey, the famous American TV host, showed one of his videos called How to Be English on her program. In this video, Charlie wears a suit and tie and talks in a funny accent. He shows viewers how to make a cup of tea. Charlie suddenly became very famous in the United States too. To say thank you to all his fans he made a video called Challenge Charlie, asking people to suggest funny or difficult things for him to do in his videos. Challenges included drinking tomato ketchup, wearing all of his clothes at once and painting himself purple. Charlie is also a singer and songwriter. His most popular videos are of him singing and playing the ukulele. In Duet With Myself, he uses special effects to sing a duet with himself about what a boring person he is. This has now been watched over 7 million times. Charlie's best friend, Alex Day, is also a musician and video blogger. They met through YouTube and started a band together. The band is called Chameleon Circuit, and they have made two CDs and performed several concerts. With more than one and a half million subscribers, Charlie is the most popular video blogger in the UK. He has now made enough money to buy a house with his friend Alex. But what is the secret of his success? I make the kind of videos that I want to watch, he says. And when asked how fame has affected him, Charlie says, I still sit in my bedroom talking to my camera, and that's what I want to do. Oh, and how did Charlie do in his exams back in 2007? Well, he passed with 9A grades and 1B. He says that he wants to go to university in the future, but decided to try and make a career on YouTube before that. Dreams Can you remember a time when you woke up from a fantastic or strange dream? Maybe you were afraid and turned on the light or the dream was so good you wanted to sleep longer. But do you think your dreams are telling you something? For hundreds of years, People thought dreams were messages from gods or spirits. Today, too, many people can remember a time when they saw a place or person in their dream and then, later, the dream happened in real life. Maybe that's not surprising because we dream a lot but we probably only remember the times when something happens in a dream and then happens for real. Most people have four to six dreams every night after the age of ten. That's as many as 2,000 dreams per year. So, an 80-year-old person has probably had 140,000 dreams. Maybe we forget 95 to 99 percent of our dreams, but that's still thousands of dreams that might come true. Around the 18th and 19th centuries, there were two popular ideas about dreams. One said that the things we see in our dreams are things we keep in our subconscious because we don't want or need to think about them when we're awake. The opposite idea said that while we're sleeping, the brain organizes memories and thoughts from the day. Dreams are just random thoughts from our day but we try to make a story from them when we wake up. But perhaps both ideas are a little bit right. Maybe dreams are made from the thoughts we have during the day but we see them as symbols. For example, a dream of flying might be a symbol for an exciting new job. When we're awake, we think in words most of the time. But when we're sleeping, the part of our brain that helps us with language sleeps, and the part that makes us happy or sad or angry is awake and busy. So, maybe our thoughts come to us in dreams as feelings and symbols instead of words. If you can understand these symbols, you have a window into your subconscious.
If you want to understand the messages, you have to match them to what's happening in your life. One way to help you do this is to keep a dream diary. As soon as you wake up, write down everything you remember about your dreams. Use pen and paper, not your phone or computer because the light might wake you up and you'll forget faster. Sometimes your eyes will be half-closed and your writing will be difficult to read. Now you can match your dreams to your daily life. Think about the people and place where the dream happened, as they might mean something too. Also, how you were feeling in the dream is important. If you were afraid instead of happy in the flying dream, maybe it means you are worried about the new job. Are you ready to find out what your subconscious is trying to tell you? Graffiti and Street Art Modern graffiti began in big cities in the United States in the 1970s. In New York, young people wrote their names, or tags, in pen on walls around the city. One of the first taggers was a teenager called Demetrius. His tag was Taki 183. He wrote his tag on walls and in stations in New York. Other teenagers saw Demetrius's tag and started writing their tags too. Soon, there were tags on walls, buses, and trains all over New York. Then, some teenagers started writing their tags with aerosol paint. Their tags were bigger and more colorful. Aerosol paint graffiti became very popular in the 1970s and 1980s. It appeared on trains, buses, and walls around the world. In the 1990s and 2000s, a lot of graffiti artists started painting pictures. Some artists' pictures were about politics. Other artists wanted to make cities beautiful and painted big, colorful pictures on city walls. In some countries, writing or painting on walls is a crime. Sometimes, graffiti artists have problems with the police. In other countries, artists can draw and paint in certain places. For example, in Taiwan, there are graffiti zones where artists can paint on walls. In Sao Paulo in Brazil, street artists can paint pictures on walls and houses. Their pictures are colorful and beautiful. Some tourists visit Sao Paulo just to see the street art. In Bristol in the UK, there is a street art festival in August every year. Artists paint all the buildings in a street. Lots of people come to watch the artists and take photos. You can see exhibitions of street art in some galleries too. There have been exhibitions of street art in galleries in Paris, London and Los Angeles. Some street artists have become famous. Here are three stars of the street art world. O.S. Gimios are twin brothers from Sao Paulo. They paint big colorful pictures of people on buildings. In 2007, they painted a castle in Scotland. Black Le Rat is from Paris. He is famous for painting pictures of homeless people in big cities. Faith 47 is from Cape Town in South Africa. She paints big, colorful pictures of people and animals. She likes painting in different places and you can find her work on pavements, post boxes, buses and, of course, on walls. Many street artists use the internet to look at photos of street art from around the world. They communicate with other artists online and share ideas. Some street artists are famous and you can see their pictures in galleries. We don't know about the future of street art, but it is here to stay for sure. Happiness. Do you know what makes you happy or do you just think you know? At first, these two questions look the same. If you think something makes you happy, then it makes you happy. You know yourself, don't you? Write a list of all the things that make you happy. How many of them are fun? Most of them? So, if you spend your time doing all these fun things, you'll be really happy, won't you? Well, maybe not. For most people, fun isn't enough for real happiness. Paul Dolan wrote a book called Happiness by Design. 
He thinks happiness comes from both pleasure and purpose. If most of the things on your list are about pleasure, that is what you think makes you happy. But you also need activities with purpose. We usually know if something is fun, but we don't know what brings meaning. For example, most people think air pilots have jobs with clear purpose. They fly hundreds of people all over the world. But they spend a lot of time in boring hotels and airports and they do the same things hundreds of times. Those activities might not bring meaning, and they're probably not fun. So pilots also need to find pleasure and purpose in their work and life. There are different ways we can find purpose in things. Some activities might be motivating because they work for the good of people and the world around us. Or what you do might help a team you're working in. If you're a student, your job is studying and passing exams. It's easy to do well in subjects you like, but subjects you don't like are less motivating. They're not fun for you, but you have to study them, so you need to find purpose. An A in a subject you hate won't help the world. But can you be part of a study team with friends? Each person can study one part until they understand it and then teach it to the rest of the group. The purpose becomes helping the team. Go back to your list of things that make you happy. How many of them are activities that bring purpose? Can you add any? Remember, some activities might bring both pleasure and purpose. Now you need to design a happy life. Paul Dolan believes people should decide, design, do. First decide what brings you pleasure and or purpose, that means your two lists. Then, don't just think about these activities, fill your life with them. For example, you might love riding a bike, but never have time to do it. So, ride to school or the library or the shops. If you live too far away, take your bike on the bus or train. Get off early and ride the rest of the way. If you go in the car, put it in the back, stop a few kilometers away and ride the rest. Or move somewhere you can ride more. Some parts of our lives are good or bad luck, but we can still design the rest to make more happiness. Hidden Treasure in the Rocky Mountains Every year, thousands of people look in the Rocky Mountains in the U.S. for $2 million of treasure. The treasure belongs to Forrest Fenn. He has collected art for his whole life. In 2010, when he was 80, he went into the Rocky Mountains by car and then on foot. He put the treasure somewhere in the woods. So that's one clue about where it is an old man can walk there with a heavy box. But the nine most important clues are in a poem, they are much more difficult to understand. Treasure hunters look at every word in the poem and they look for extra clues in Forrest's two books about his life. Here is one part to start with. Begin it where warm waters stop. And take it in the canyon down. Not far, but too far to walk. Put in below the home of Brown. Warm waters and the home of Brown are probably important clues. Warm and cold water could be two rivers. Brown might be a person because names usually start with a capital letter. So, maybe you have to look for people called Brown who live in the Rocky Mountains. Unfortunately, a lot of people have the surname Brown. The only way to test your ideas is to try and find the treasure. Forrest says people should wait until spring because winter weather is dangerous. He also says people shouldn't go alone. But not everyone listens. Three people have gone missing while they were looking for the treasure. The police want Forrest to take the treasure and put a photo of himself with the box on the internet. They think the treasure hunters will stop looking and no more people will die. But Forrest says no. He thinks people spend too much time inside their houses and offices on their computers and phones. He wants families to learn about nature and have adventures together. His plan is working. Some treasure hunters have looked for the box many times. Marty and her daughter Libby travel from their home in Georgia to look in Montana. Libby says, 
I was really afraid of bears around every corner for the first two years, but you slowly become less afraid of animals. I love seeing so many animals up close, camping in the mountains and crossing rivers. It's all so exciting, even if we never find the treasure. But there are people who think the whole thing is a trick. Some say maybe Forrest had a box of treasure, but they don't believe he put it in the mountains. Others say he took the box back years ago. They say maybe he just likes knowing people are talking about him. But many of the people who say it's a trick often still go to the Rocky Mountains to test their ideas. Of course, maybe someone has already found the treasure, but they didn't tell anyone. But that won't stop more people going to look for the treasure this spring. Are you interested in the treasure hunt? Life as a YouTuber Do funny or interesting things happen to you a lot? Do you think hundreds of thousands of people will want to listen to you tell stories about your life? That's what life is like for YouTube star, Jessie V. More than 150 million people watch her videos of funny stories about herself, and subscribers to her channel grow every day. 23-year-old Jessie from Ontario, Canada, turns her life into her work, six days a week. I spend all of Sunday having ideas for videos to film that week, says Jessie. Then, on Monday, I wake up early to start making the videos. Usually, a video takes just over an hour to make. I try to make around five, so it takes most of my day. Then, from Tuesday to Friday, I edit them. Jessie also spends a few hours a week writing to her fans. Sometimes she meets fans because people recognize her when she goes out. The other day I went to buy coffee, she says, and the girl serving me almost dropped my coffee when she saw it was me. She left the coffee shop to meet me outside to take pictures. It always makes me happy to see my fans are happy. Online life isn't all good. In the past, Jessie felt bad when people said negative things about her. Some people online are so quick to write hate comments, she says. Some people said that she has really big cheeks and a really thin mouth. It made her feel bad until she found a different way to think. People were negative about things that I can't change. So I decided to love those things and I became more confident in myself. Only people who don't feel good about themselves make hate comments. If you want to start a YouTube channel, there are some things to think about. One thing you might want to do is turn off the comments. Then you won't get any negative ones. Being safe is very important, so don't show your face or real name and don't tell people where you live. One of the most famous YouTubers, Dan TDM, a 26-year-old English man, didn't show his face in the beginning and now his videos have over 10 billion views, Jesse has some advice about what kind of videos to make. Be yourself. Don't change to try to make people like you. They will love you. When I first started YouTube, I wanted to look good and do things in ways that people would like. In my old videos, I don't look comfortable because I'm not being myself. But in my videos now, you can see that I'm 100% myself. I'm crazy and strange, and I don't care what people think. Jesse also says you should make your channel about something you really care about because that will inspire people. People know when you're not being the real you because you just want to be popular. Make videos about something you love and your channel will grow much faster, believe me.